All right, so let's go ahead and install Django into a brand new virtual environment. Now that we understand hopefully pretty well how to actually create virtual environments, let's go ahead and install Django into a place that I would actually use it. I wouldn't put my projects on the desktop. That's typically not where I put them. So let's go ahead and open up our PowerShell. PowerShell by default opens in the root of your user's folder, right? Or your user's directory. It's denoted by this right here, right? So I've got C colon slash user slash J. Yours will probably be something different. So this root is also where our virtual environment were created for PIP and V, right? So virtual environments are right here. And I have a bunch of other things that you may or may not have, which probably isn't that surprising. One of the things I have that you most likely do not is a folder called dev. So I typically in my user's root folder right next to, you know, downloads, desktop, uh, documents, contacts, right next to all that stuff, I typically make a new folder called dev. So I go make dir and dev. Now, of course, in my case, I already have it. If you don't have it, go ahead and create it. And then I CD into that dev folder. And in my case, I'll list everything out. I've got a bunch of things that you definitely don't have. Uh, but I'll go ahead and clear these things out and run to create my virtual environment. So I need to make a directory called, let's call it CFE Praj, and then I'll CD into CFE Praj, and then I'll run the command to create a virtual environment, which if you remember, it's pipmv shell or pipmv install. Either one will actually create the environment for you. So pipmv shell, and it's gonna create it inside of this folder right here. Notice that it's using, or it's gonna create a pip file because you don't have one there. And then it's also gonna be using my default python.exe file. Um, so that's pretty cool. So the default version of Python that I would probably want to use for this virtual environment. I'm gonna let that finish and then we'll install. Okay, so now that it's done, um, I can just really quickly verify that by typing in Python, import sys, and then print sys.executable. And sure enough, it's showing me that it's using the Python that's in this virtual environment. So I can go ahead and execute out of that. And I can type out clear. And again, if you're unsure of it, whether or not it's in the virtual environment already, you can write pip, pip env shell and it'll, it'll do it again. And sure enough, if I list everything out, I see that I have a pip file in there. No surprise there. So all I'm gonna do now is actually install the version of Django that I want to install. So let's go to the Django project. So djangoproject.com, click on download and look for the latest version of Django. So notice that it says pip install Django 3.0.4. So that is the latest version, but we've been using pip env. So how do I work with this command? Well, it's simple. Instead of doing pip install, it's just pip env install Django. And you can specify a version like Django has here. So you could just say equals equals 3.0.4. When you specify that version, it will also specify it inside of that pip file. So just adding dot, uh, env on here will actually install the project that you're trying to install onto the pip file. If you don't have the env there, it just won't update the pip file, that's all. It will still in install it in your virtual environment assuming that you do have it actually activated. Um, that's really only the difference between using pip env and not. So yes, of course, this will still install it into your virtual environment if you have it activated. But if you use pip env, it will actually update your pip file to the actual requirements of your project, which we could see by opening up this project itself, right? So um, let's go ahead and just navigate to it with the file explorer. C, C drive users, J, virtual ENVs. Oh wait, no, we don't need to go in the virtual ENV. We just need to go to the dev folder. And then we called it CFE proj. And then there's my pip file. And I'm gonna open this up with my text editor of VS Code, Visual Studio Code. Um, notice that Django is not in here yet. Uh, it's probably because it's still installing Django. So it needs to download in Django 
and install it. I'm gonna let that finish and then we'll be back. Okay, so it's nearly installed. Um, my pip file actually updated right after it said that it was done, right? So it said install installation succeeded and then it added Django to the pip file. And now Django is successfully installed. I can verify this by running pip freeze and there it is. So something else you'll see a lot and I'm gonna add this in right now because we just installed Django with pip EMV. If you happen to install something with pip install like Python requests, um, that's okay. You can absolutely still do that. It will still work in your virtual environment. And all you really need to do is say pip freeze is greater than or greater than requirements.txt. This is another standard that you'll see often is a requirements file. So requirements.txt is another way to keep track of the things that you installed. It's to keep track of you know your, your virtual environment related things or your project's requirements as it shows here. But notice that this is a lot more explicit than the pip file has been. So I can actually update my pip file to have those requirement file with pip env install dash r requirements.txt. And this will actually import all of those requirements from requirements.txt into my pip file. And now it has all of these other things in here. So this is where little versions of Python projects might come into being a problem, right? So the main thing for this project in my case is really just Django 3.0.4. It has nothing to do with any of these other things, right? And in fact, these right here, I didn't even install. The virtual environment did it automatically. So when I installed Django, it installed all of the dependencies that Django had. So dependencies are other Python libraries that it was working with. Um, so that also happened when I installed Python requests. So to kind of simplify this, I can actually get rid of all of these things in my pip file and only use the two things that I actually installed, which was Django and requests. And Python requests, I didn't give it a version, so I can get rid of that version and just put a star there. And this roughly does exactly what I was doing. Now, you can still keep this requirements.txt file. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But by and large, when you see a pip file, this is what you should be defaulting off of, not the requirements.txt. Of course, there are people that messed it up. As you see, it probably could be easily messed up. So it's just something that's good to know about that there's oftentimes a pip file and it often looks like this. It's often done well. And oftentimes there's a requirements file that's also done well. Like this is not incorrect. Um, it's just isn't showing me everything about my environment, including that Python version. And that is the key thing here. Requirements.txt does not show the Python version, which maybe it doesn't sound like it, it matters, but it, it, it definitely matters. Like if I was using Python version 3.8 versus 3.5, there's a number of things that are quite a bit different, even though it's still Python 3, you as a user would get unbelievably frustrated if you weren't using the right version of Python or if it's like Python 2.7, if for some reason these requirements actually worked for that, you'll, you'll run into the issues and you'll be like, what is going on? Um, so I haven't even written any code yet, right? I've, I've just been setting up the environment. So that's it for installing Django. 